Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in. I'm Adrian DeLuca, a reporter for Nosh.com, and I'm joined today here by Lisa Curtis, founder of Moringa-based food and beverage brand Cooley Cooley. We're at Expo West, second to last day. Um, Lisa, you guys have been exhibiting your new product at the show. How's that been going? What yeah. have impressions been like for the new Super Gummies? It's been awesome. Um, like, pretty unbelievably positive feedback. I mean, it, first of all, it just feels so good to be back. Uh, but we've had so much great feedback on, you know, how the gummies taste. People are like, this tastes too good to be nutritious, but there's like 600 milligrams of sustainable superfoods. Um, we decided to do something really innovative on the packaging. They are not in a plastic bottle. They're in a post-consumer recycled pouch, um, which a lot of people really like. They said their only problem might be that they eat the whole bag, which is a great problem for us to have. And um, yeah, I've had a lot of big buyers stop by wanting to bring it in, so fingers crossed. So you guys have been working to get Moringa into different food and beverage products. What makes a gummy format gonna make that a staple ingredient within their diets? Yeah, so I think we all know that, you know, for apple cider vinegar, gummies were a huge turning point. And I think for Moringa, we find we have so many customers who love the pure Moringa powder. They love the earthiness. They're like, it tastes green. I love it. I feel it. And then there's a lot of other customers who are like, you know, I'm not, I'm not always down for a green smoothie. I'm not always interested in like the green earthy. I just want something that tastes really great. That's fun to eat. Maybe is like tastes a little bit indulgent, but is actually healthy for me. Um, and I think that's really who our gummies are designed for, folks that want that convenient way to incorporate sustainable, strong tasting superfoods like Moringa into their diets. So as we've mentioned, Moringa is not necessarily the most well-known ingredient in Americans' diets. How have you guys navigated integrating it into a variety of different formats and navigated consumer education yeah. on like what the benefits are and why they should be buying these products. Yeah, I think one of the really interesting and unique things about Moringa is that even though it's unfamiliar to a lot of Americans, it's culturally important to a lot of different Americans. So it's it's used a lot in Ayurvedic medicine. We find a lot of folks with ties to India, they're like, oh, Moringa, the drumstick tree. I love the drumstick tree. Um, we find a lot of folks from the Philippines where Moringa is the national vegetable. They're like, oh, Malangai, I know Malangai. A lot of folks from all over the Africa continent, know it as the tree of life or the miracle tree. Um, and then, you know, we find a lot of folks in the Latinx community know it as like this weight loss herb, something that they use to treat diabetes, used all over Central and South America. So um, we find that, you know, even in places like Walmart or CVS or larger conventional retailers where you maybe wouldn't expect some, uh, you know, unknown superfood like Moringa to do really well, we are killing it. Um, we're doing extremely well, of course, and also in places like Whole Foods Market and Sprouts where um, a lot of our target consumer shops as well. But, um, you know, it, it's been a journey. We, we exhibited here at Expo West in 2015, and I think 99% of the people who came to our booth is like, what is this? Tell me more. Um, and now, you know, with so many folks from the New York Times to Whole Foods calling Moringa one of the top trends of 2022, there's a lot more people who actually know what it is and they want to try it. They're excited about it. Excellent. So as we've said, you built this brand off the benefits of Moringa, but also you've taken a very unique approach within your supply chain. Yeah. You've made it your mission to support primarily women farmers all around the world growing Moringa. Over the past few year though, or few years with the pandemic, a lot of brands have faced supply chain challenges. How is this unique network helped or hurt? Yeah, so I, you know, I think in some ways, the fact that we've built our supply chain from scratch and we have a direct relationship with our farmers has made us more resilient. We've had zero out of stocks throughout awesome. the entire Congrats. pandemic. Um, and I think it, it really goes to show like getting that deeply involved in your supply chain really helps root you when things go awry. That being said, you know, with, with price increases, with the crazy freight logistics, it has not been easy. We've really had to be open and transparent with our partners and saying, you know, like we now need everything to be ready six months earlier because it's taking six months longer to ship to California from Uganda, um, things like that. But I think having built these partnerships over many, many years, we've been fortunate to, to be able to stay in stock and, and keep the partnerships going. All right, Lisa, well, thank you for talking all things Moringa with me. And thank you everyone for tuning in. Please stay tuned for additional coverage on both BevNet and NOSH throughout the event.